Hello, my friends, how are you doing? Today, I'm gonna show you how to design engaging social media posts with Affinity Photo. My name is Olivio, I'm a professional designer, and I wanna thank all of my patrons who support me and make these videos possible. So let's first look at the worst case scenario. So we have this post here, and there are multiple mistakes to avoid that you see more often than you might think. First of all, the picture is very busy, so it's really hard to place any text on it. And when you place the text on it, it's super hard to read that. Also in the picture, you don't really know what is going on. Where are you supposed to look? What is the picture supposed to show you? The second thing is there is too much text. You need to keep the text as short as possible, especially because when you zoom out and often you see these pictures very small on your devices like your smartphone, but also on your browser when they are shown, for example, in the sidebar as a thumbnail, you can't read the text anymore. That is not ideal. Then what we also have in this picture is down here, we have even more text that is distracting and you don't really need that because you have posted the image on your social media account, which means the picture is already at a place where people can connect to you. So in most cases, you don't need that. People can just click on your profile and then connect to you. Also up here, we have a logo. The logo is way too big. Again, you don't really need the logo because this is already on your social media account. So people know it's from you. They can connect to you. Sometimes you want it to stand out and see people. Oh, this is from that brand, right? So for example, I use that for my YouTube posts and sometimes also for my Facebook posts that I have my logo in there. But what you want to do here is that you first of all, don't put it awkwardly into the picture and kind of close to the border. Either put it directly on the border, but at the same time, make it a lot smaller so that people can still see it. They can still recognize it, but it is not too big or put it decisively somewhere in the picture. For example, in the center of the picture that can be good or at another place and make it harmonize with the rest of the picture. So let's look at some better examples and also answer the question on where can you find the different sizes. So find the sizes is actually very easy. Just go to Google and search for social media image sizes 2021. And here are two examples of pages. I'm not related to any of those pages. I don't have affiliation with them. So you can see here, you find all these sizes for the different kinds of medias, for the different kinds of pages, what you need to use. Here is another one from Hootsuite. You can also use that. This is more detailed. You get more information here on this page. You can see here with all these kind of different informations and giving you a lot of, for example, here also for uh, what is this? This is Instagram. So you have difference for carousel, for IGTV, for ads, for story ads. There's different kind of resolutions and things you need to look for. So that might be interesting to you if you plan to post in these different uh, versions, in these different formats, right? Okay, let's look now at interesting good posts and how to do them. First of all, Look for pictures that have enough place for text if you want to put text into the picture. Like here we have a nice empty background. Then think about what is the story that your post is about? What do you want to point out? In this case, it's a question and the picture is relating to the question. So think about what is the cause, what is the idea that I want to post and then have the content of your picture as closely as possible connect or resemble that idea, that cause that the post is about. Another trick here is that you can see I've used the question. This is pushing engagement. That's pretty good. So people can react to that. At the same time, what you can see here is that this is an open ended question. So you cannot answer this with yes or no. You have to write something longer and this will also enable people to talk to each other to start a conversation. For example, if you would ask, do you like smoothies? That is not good because people would write yes or no, and this is not really a conversation starter. But if you ask what smoothie type are you, it's interesting, it's fun, and people can talk about each other. Also, you get some more information about the people who are posting so you can relate better to them and respond 
better to them, right? Play around with different fonts. This font is interesting, but it's rather thin. So if I zoom out, you can see that it's getting rather hard to read the text. Also, when you play around with different fonts, you can see how this changes the character of the post, of the intent, of the dynamic, of the emotion that the post is sharing with the community. This, for example, is a lot more playful. And here's another third font, which is also playful in a different type. What you want to look out for here is don't use fonts that are that fancy that you can't read the text anymore. So go to a degree that is still playful and fun, but at the same time easy to read and also possible to read in a smaller size. That's very important. Now here is a second thing a lot of people ask, how do I find a good color to mix for my font, right? This is very easy. Simply select the font, use the color picker and then use a color that's already in your picture. But what you want to look out for, don't use a picture that is too close to the background that you want to use because then again the text is very hard to read. So make it a high contrast choice. For example, we go down here to a dark red. Let's use for example this here. And you can see we have a nice combination. And because this color is also in the picture, you have a harmony and it is fitting. This is a very easy way to find a good color for your font. All right, let's think about some other ideas here on how to design engaging social media posts. So one thing you want to do when you have selected a picture that is fun, playful, interesting, that you think your community might like is that you want to use several adjustments to over adjust your image. What I mean by that is, for example, down here, you can find all of the different adjustments in here, right? So you can use a brightness and contrast adjustment to make the picture higher contrast than you would usually do just a little bit, just like push it a little bit harder than you usually would. So you can see here, we give it a little bit more contrast. Then you can also use the vibrance adjustment to give it more vibrance, more saturation than you usually would. Let's turn this on. You can see it's a bit intense. And then over here, you have the live filters. Here you have the unsharpened mask. And what you want to do here is again, to sharpen it a little bit stronger than you usually would. Why are we doing this? The reason for that is, again, you often see social media posts in a much smaller size on your browser in the sidebar or on your social media device like your smartphone. You will see small thumbnails. And in that case, when they get smaller, first of all, the pixels get smushed together. So if it's over sharpened, it still looks sharp, even if a small size. Also, when it's over sharpened and it gets recompressed, it's still sharper than it usually would be. And the stronger color and the stronger contrast still makes the picture look good, even if it is in a small size. So to do it a little bit harder than you would usually go is often a good idea with social media. All right. Here are some post types that you can share that are very engaging and that connect good to your community. So for example, one type is where you have these shots that are showing you in action, kind of behind the scenes, kind of right in the motion of doing your thing, living your life, showing an interesting detail of how your day is going, because this First of all, shows you human side, it's engaging, it, you bring yourself on eye level and you have the people with you on your life, in your life and show your journey in progress, right? So this is very interesting and you can emotionally connect to the person in the picture. In this case, you, of course. So um, that is a very interesting, good format. And you can also, again, in this case, don't maybe don't put text in the picture. You can put text in the description of the photo and there you can ask questions. You can also ask for advice. This is also a good way to do social media posts. Ask your community questions about things you don't know because again, this makes you more human, but at the same time, it helps your community connect to you and shows that you are not super perfect. You also have questions and also you value your community and their expertise 
too that is really important and let's go to the next format these are photos of small achievements maybe even big achievements in your life but it can be as small as making a nice breakfast for yourself it doesn't have to be a super big achievement again the idea is to bring people along on your journey share what you're doing share things that you found out for yourself that work for yourself share the fun that you're having again you can also ask your community for advice or ask them about their own experience it's always a good way to start a conversation another thing is and this was the starting picture of this tutorial think about what are the other parts of the story that i want to share with my community so in this case we have different traveling equipment basically and this helps us get in the mood show a little bit of a story show how we engage into travel what kind of travel it is how we plan that it's always interesting to give this kind of insight at the same time it tells a part of the story that we often forget to tell because we for example go to the mountain and then shoot a picture from the top of the mountain but we are not showing how we buy the tickets or how we plan the trip or what we put in our backpack or the kind of camera equipment we uh, take with us but all of this can be very interesting and is an engaging format to post so for example what is in my camera bag or what is in my backpack or what kind of food do i bring along a very um loved social media themes social media posts that you can do right okay here is another trick i want to share with you and that is more specific to smartphones because i mean it is good if you have a wide angle lens but smartphones often have a wide angle function built in there so you don't need a super expensive wide angle lens and what you can do with that is you can capture a much more interesting shot of your surrounding because much more is in the picture but on top of that what wide angle does is that it skews the perspective so you can create these kind of interesting shots at the same time you can capture more even of tight spaces and create really interesting compositions and another thing that the wide angle does is that like I said, it skews the perspective, but then when you put your camera at an angle, it skews it even more. So you, for example, can show a skyscraper much bigger than it actually is. Or you can show um, when you photograph a sculpture, for example, or you photograph uh, your food or a flower with the skewing of the perspective can make for a really interesting action shot, right? Another thing that you can see right here also in this shot is because a lot of social media posts are in color, try to do something in black and white. So you can also find nice apps for your smartphone. We can edit right there or do it in Affinity Photo to not just desaturate the picture, but really edit it a little bit high contrast and play around with the settings for black and white. So you get really a story, make it into an interesting pattern and bring out maybe some very interesting moments where you can concentrate on the content of the picture rather than just having everything in there with the color because color can be very distracting sometimes and also because you are posting in black and white and everybody else is posting in color your post is automatically sticking out a lot more so these are the six tricks in this tutorial thank you very much for watching i hope you like them if you have more suggestions if you have questions please put both of them in the comments if you like my videos maybe subscribe please leave a like and see you in the next tutorial bye